you're having a fine day. Uh, one of the most challenging projects in woodworking is building musical instruments, being a luthier, building acoustic guitars and mandolins and so forth. So this is first of a series of videos where I'm going to do that. Um, I've built several guitars, mostly acoustics, and um, so there'll be several videos here kind of showing you the process and doing that. It's not as in-depth as some other videos out there. There's a lot of great resources around on how to do this, but this is basically kind of the, the technique that I use. And uh, it's been said that being a luthier or building guitars or building acoustical instruments is one of the most challenging woodworking tasks. And I disagree. Um, it's challenging, but it's the same woodworking skills to build an instrument that you would use to build anything. Um, a lot of math. Uh, a lot of angles, uh, a lot of woodworking techniques, such as how to steam bend wood, how to shape wood, how to do some great joinery, um, so uh, how to get things plumb, square, and true. All that's the same for building a guitar as it is building any piece of good furniture. So I hope you enjoy these. Uh, and please leave a comment. Thanks, and again, have a fine day. <music> And basically what you have here is, um, this is hard maple, and these are the layout lines for the width of the neck. The guitar neck is tapered from the top down to the bottom. Over the bottom are cut lines for the uh, dovetail joint, and also um, basically measurement cut lines for the center of the guitar. It's very important that we have a good center of the guitar. Now here, second step is the rough cut. What I didn't show on camera was I channeled using a router table. A channel for the truss rod and you'll see that later on which is a metal rod that that um, adds some flexibility or basically allows you to adjust the guitar neck so in your second step when you rough cut a piece of wood uh, you're basically using the band saw table saw hand saws and you're cutting the wood to uh, to rough dimensions these aren't the typically these aren't the final dimensions you're going to use on a project so here you're seeing the bandsaw I'm cutting for the mortise and tenon joint, um, cutting the ears uh, off of that basically using my uh, bandsaw. And this is a word of caution on the bandsaw, be careful. You know, all tools in the shop can hurt you. Uh, when I was a young man working in a um, wood shop and furniture plant, I saw a couple of young, other young men lose a finger to a bandsaw, so it can be dangerous. So now we've cut out that mortise and tenon joint, kind of a rough cut on this one. Later on, we'll chisel that and we'll do some other works and fine detail work to make that um, much nicer looking um, joint, much tighter joint. And you see here, there's basically several blocks of wood of maple glued together. This is how vast majority of guitar necks are built. It's not one large piece of wood. Um, the, um, the strength of this neck is incredibly strong, being the type of wood it is and how the joinery is done. Now in this portion here, I changed out my bandsaw blade from a three quarter inch blade down to a uh, quarter inch blade and I'm cutting the shape out of the neck. That taper, this is the headstock I'm cutting across here. I got a little waist on there and here I'm going down to the side. This is where the tuning machines will be uh, put in. Uh, kind of giving a nice taper there using the bandsaw. Bandsaw is one of the most enjoyable tools, large tools to use in the shop because it's versatile. Uh, you can do so much with it and makes easy work out of what used to be a pretty difficult task of uh, cutting out um, uh, as far as cutting out um, small pieces and cutting out details and so forth. So here I've cut off the uh, the headstock kind of to a rough shape and the next what I'll be doing is then cutting the taper of the neck itself. So without the fingerboard attached the neck is about over half an inch in in, um, in thickness at the top the first fret it's about uh, about one and three quarter inches give or take a little bit and down at the base of the guitar it's about two and a quarter inches so it does taper out quite a bit and of course each guitar maker does it a little differently most guitar makers kind of follow a standard that was established by, uh, by CF Martin um, on their guitars like it or not uh, they are the kind of the um, the industry standard when it comes to guitar uh, sizes. But of course, a lot of the good guitars out there. So here I'm cutting off one side of the uh, neck, get about to the right size. Again, this is a rough cut. This isn't the finished cut. I'm getting as close as possible later on so I can machine the guitar neck on down. There's one side down 
and now I've cut the other side. Now I'm cutting off the uh, the ears, not the ears. I'm sorry, uh, the um, the base of the uh, of the neck there, where it's going to join the body of the guitar. Again, that again closer to the final shape that's going to be. And again, careful here because you see on that bandsaw there's a lot of blade exposed. So cleaning this up. And then once we finish this step, the rough cut step, then we start using other tools and we start doing the shaping of the neck itself, which is probably the most enjoyable portion of building a guitar neck. And then we are cutting out of the side, getting into a, a more easily uh, machined size piece of wood. Now we're in step three, which is rough shaping. And here I've got my drawn out. This knife belonged to my, to my dad. And I love using his tools. I got some of his tools, and some of my grandfather's tools, and every time I use it, it's just a uh, great experience. My uh, knife here, however, needs a little bit of sharpening. As you can see, those shavings aren't coming off as clean as I would like for them to. So what we're doing now, we're getting a rough, rough shape of the neck. We're pulling that draw knife, cutting off some shavings there. Of course, this is maple, so it's some hard wood to work with. But I love working with maple. It's just a beautiful green wood. I love the color of it. It machines well. And so here we're we're getting that round, that that that, that semi-circle shape of the neck here. This takes a while. Um, this is where you get into your shop late in the evening. Put on some decent music and uh, just relax and enjoy doing some more working. Now I see I've got that machine down somewhat. And I'm working my draw knife a little bit quicker, do a better angle there. Put on those wood shavings. A lot of cleanup with this step though when you're done. Those are shavings everywhere in the shop. And I have to apologize, my shop is kind of messy. It tends to stay kind of messy because I actually work in it. And um, I'm already doing a project. So here we go. As you can see, I'm kind of bringing that shape on around. Right now, there's no direct measurement. I'm just kind of eyeballing things. Now I brought out a sure form tool. This is my grandfather's tool. I think the blade on this tool is probably 50 years old and it cuts wonderfully. What the Sureform tool does is it gives you a nicer, a uh, little more control, a little better shaving. And now we've done that, now we're at the fine shaping. Fine shaping, we're using several tools. I got some calipers here. These are Japanese calipers I picked up at an estate sale and they're very accurate. And I'm now measuring the depthness of the neck. Next, I'm going to have some calipers, set those to the same height, so it makes it a little easier to kind of go back and forth on the neck. And again, I want that neck to be, with, without the fingerboard, about half an inch, a little bit less than that, and even all the way down. This is a contour gauge. Now, one part of my neck, up by the third fret, I have shaped to the size I want. So with this contour gauge, I can push on that, set the contour that I want, and lock it in place. So as I shape this neck, to the fine shaping, I can use that gauge to see where I'm at. It's a great time saver, and this is also a great tool to use when you're doing uh, uh, custom molding and so forth. So now I've got the piece clamped down, I'm taking the straight edge and seeing and finding my high spots on the neck. The more time you spend here, um, the better the process goes, and you end up having a perfect neck when you're done. I'm taking a larger Sureform tool, taking off a few shavings, and just checking that center line to make sure that it is straight before I go any further. I gotta have a good reference point in order to uh, uh, do this task correctly here. And again, this is still pretty rough. This hasn't been sanded. This is just, uh, uh, it's been drawn out, it's carved a little bit, and now it's rough. I know the video looks like it's kind of smooth, but it's not. So now I find my calipers and kind of take some measurements to see where I'm at. And I'm looking for what's at the right height what's too high. So this is kind of a long, tedious step, but again, you've heard the old adage, measure twice and cut once. That's true. Now I'm taking a pencil and I'm measuring where those high spots are. Have good reference marks with the pencil there so I know I don't go too far. And get it all about right. Again, this is gonna be the same, the same thickness uh, from the first fret down to um, for that neck joint starts, which is around the 12th fret. Okay, so marking that up, I tell you what, it was hot that day in the shop. Here in South Texas, it's running 100 degrees every day, and um, 
it can wear you out after you're out there for a few hours. Okay, so see, I'm making pencil marks here just to, to, to find my high spots. Now I'm going to clamp that neck back on there. And again, I'm spending more time on this because this is uh, one of the most important points of the of the video here of the process is to is to take the time to measure your angles right, to measure your curve right. Now taking the Sureform tool, I'm going to work this to the top of that down to my pencil mark. So it's nice and the same thickness again from that first fret down to the twelfth fret. I love Sureform tools. They, they, they do such a great job on fine detail work when you're doing curves or you're doing um, edge pieces. Now I've moved over. I've now got a wood brass, but uh, like a, that's it. one side of that is coarse, one side is fine, and I'm working that edge right there for the for the uh, neck joins the body to get a nice rounded over uh, neck there. Once I've done that, I go over to my drum sander and I run that up and down. This again is a long process. Take your time checking things. Checking things continuously, checking to make sure I haven't gone too far. And once you go too far, you're starting over. So, a little light pressure. I'm using this is 80 grit paper I use on this on the uh, drum sander. It does a quick job, but it doesn't get too aggressive in taking the grain off or taking the wood down too far. Okay, still shaping that around. As you can see there's still a lot of shaping to be done. Uh, once I've got that to a rough shape, doing some measurements make sure I'm still in my center line there which I'll explain in another video about fingerboards on this video here you don't see me actually putting the fingerboard on the fretboard and I'll show you that in another video so now I'm just gonna start hand sanding this and once the drum sander does what it does I start hand sanding and uh, start with 80 grit and on this I moved up to about 150 grit 150 grit this is not gonna be a finished neck when I'm done but it's gonna be ready now this is step 5 fretting so I get my fret wire from a company called Stumac out of Ohio. Great folks to deal with. It's pretty simple. I've got a little uh, anvil, a little ah put on there. I use a brass hammer. This fret wire is nickel, silver nickel, and I don't want to damage it. It is pretty durable, but if you were to take like a larger hammer or something that doesn't have a good edge to it, you can put some, some marks in there. So I use a brass hammer. This is a old upholstery hammer. When I'm done with that, I cut off uh, with cutters, the ends of the frets as close as possible and then this is a long tedious process taking small diamond files I file off those ends to the uh, to the right uh, crown you want them sharp but you want them to be very playable so um, probably spend a couple hours just doing this alone and that's our finished neck right there so again this video I didn't show you a bunch of details and measurements and all that that's to come this is just a video showing how to shape a neck. And again, this is good for any kind of woodworking project, um, how, to, how to shape things, how to shape wood. There's no more greater satisfaction than to take a raw piece of wood, just a cut lumber, and to machine it, and to uh, do something nice with it. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and uh, please subscribe and leave me a comment. I'd like to hear what you think, good and bad. Again, thanks for watching so much. I hope that all y'all have just a, a fine day out there.